Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Tim Travels. So, um, Beatrice and I um, have made our way from uh, Utah over here to Wells, Nevada. And, but I wanted to kind of <laughs> tell you about a little adventure I had at the Salt Lake Terminal. And by the way, you know, the Salt Lake Terminal, you know, people have put videos on about it and, you know, it is everything that people said it was. Um, it's a, it, you know, it's a first class facility. I mean, it's, I kind of expected that. Um, and, um, you know, Prime does things pretty well when they set their mind to it. So, um, that's really nice. Um, and by the way, I don't know if, it, even if you do work for Prime, you may not know that Prime's getting ready to open a terminal um, or build it, I guess, and I don't know when it would be open. In, um, I, I think around Manuka, Illinois, which is just, it's right off of Interstate 80, just to the west of the intersection with Interstate 55. So if you know that area, um, Morris, Illinois is just west of there. There's a big Costco, uh, DC there, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of business in that area, certainly. Um, but I don't think it's going to be one of the huge, like full service kind of places like, um, in Springfield, Pittston and Salt Lake City. So anyway, um, so catching up on Utah. You know, we were in Salt Lake City this morning, got there pretty early. Um, and, you know, Salt Lake City, of course, is important for several reasons. One is it uh, hosted the 1992 Winter Olympics. I mean, Salt Lake area, right? Northern Utah. Um, which, by the way, is the Olympics that kind of... <laughs> Mitt Romney kind of saved, um, so he's got that going for him, um, and it, it was, it, and I'm not exaggerating, it, it, it was it was in a shambles before Mitt Romney stepped in and, and kind of shepherded it through, and it was a big success, and it, you know, it's not just important for Utah, it was important for the United States, so, um, and that's the, you know, we've hosted the Winter Olympics, um, I think three other times in the United States, twice in, Ma in Lake Placid, New York, and I think once in Squaw Valley, California. I might have to check on that, but, but I seem to recall that there was an Olympics held there a long time ago, before I was around. Um, and if, if you know anything about me, just ask my kids. I'm pretty freaking old. So, um, yeah, so hosted the Olympics. Um, that's one thing. It's the capital. Salt Lake City is the capital of Utah. Um, and um, on a personal note, it's where I was married to my current wife, actually my only wife, about almost 29 years ago. Almost 29 years ago. So, um, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of cool things to do in that area, um, and it's grown crazy since. Like it was, you know, it was a big city when I got married, but man, that whole uh, the Salt Lake Valley, Utah Valley, all the way down to like Spanish Fork, Utah, maybe even south of there, just crazy growth, crazy growth. Um, so anyway, you know, I had a load that was going out to Auburn, Washington, but. Because I, you know, you know that I, I I spent like a day and a half messing around in the greater Atlanta area with two loads that both ended up being aborted. So I won't go back into that. But my 70 hour clock was really kind of um, lower than I would have normally managed it to be. So yesterday I didn't have, um, I didn't have a lot of time to drive. So I drove as much as I could and, you know, I exchanged man messages with my fleet manager and, and I'm like, I think this load, you know, we kind of agreed it needed to be repowered. So fortunately there was a team, actually a trainer and a trainee, but a team, um, 
that my fleet manager also manages. Um, so I guess we're in the same fleet. Um, and they were on their way to the Central Valley of California with a load. And so the difference is about probably at least 250 miles um, on the trip. So, and the load in California delivered later, significantly, like seven hours later than the load going to Washington. So I came in and the plan is, plan was, and we've already accomplished it, um, basically swap trailers and, and they'll finish my load and I'll finish their load. But so when I got there, I was like, man, this trailer was nasty. I picked it up, you know, at a, at a processing plant and um, my truck was dirty. So I'm like, oh, I'll pull into the um, truck wash here. So, you know, I'm not really paying attention. The guy comes out, younger guy. And, you know, he's doing it. He's working his magic, right? He's scrubbing, spraying. And then he turns on the giant truck wash machine. So when the horizontal brush thingamajig, I don't know what you call that, auger. <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. But anyway, when it starts working its magic, right? I hear this pretty loud noise, but I figured, okay, well, it's one of those like, spongy flappy things that you see in car washes clobbering my um, deer guard or you know in the in the front of the the front of the hood so but then it as it travels up it's still like really smacking the crap out of my truck well then an, another guy who is um, who has good hearing is clearly experienced he comes running out of the of, of a door to the right of the truck and shuts the whole unit off. Well, then once that shut off, I could see out my passenger window, like right behind the, the, the main mirror, a CB antenna um, hanging down from that giant brush. And so, um, you know, I was like, okay. So they, they put it back and they get some wire cutters and cut this CB antenna out of um, the brush and then they continue washing my truck. So, you know, I'm pulling out and then, so then my next step was I was gonna park the trailer I had on my back, drop it, and then just wait for these other guys to show up. So, you know, when you pull out of the truck wash, you're, you know, your side windows are wet, the mirrors are all wet. And so I didn't really notice anything at first, but then when I pulled around and the sun really caught my right side mirrors as I'm looking over there while I'm swinging the trailer around. I'm like, what the hell? My my hood mirror was spider webbed, and my main mirror, um, main side view mirror was also cracked into pieces. I mean, they weren't falling out, but it was all spider web too. So I drop the trailer. I go back to the I go back to the truck wash. I'm like, hey. Uh, you know that antenna that you guys cut out of that brush? Um, it broke two of my mirrors. The guy's like, what? He comes out, I show him. He's like, okay, um, I'm gonna go right over to the truck tractor shop. You know, just come right over there and, and I'll get him to replace it. So he was cool about it. And um, so I get over there and the first guy I meet, and, and, and let me preface this by saying that I really appreciate um, good mechanics in general, but I especially appreciate them working at trucking companies that I work for. Cause I've, I've worked for two companies where it was not a strong point of the company, you know, their maintenance. Um, it was all attitude all the time. It, it was every time you went and talked to them, it was like manana, manana. And, and, and by the way, when I say manana, I am not alluding to the fact that, it, or I'm not alluding to their nationality. I said manana. They, they, trust me, they don't know that word. Um, and it was always like, oh yeah, well, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that and we'll let you know and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, um, so I meet this guy today, Jorge, 
and he was like super professional. He did a great inspection of my truck, and and if you you may recall me, t you may recall me talking about a problem with my APU, and he was like, oh well, I described what was going on. He's like, oh well, that's because of this, the pickup tube, and because it kept acting like it was fuel starved, even when I had like once I got to a third of a tank, it just wouldn't start because it, it was like it didn't have any fuel. So then he also found a leak in the fuel filter housing. And so when I come back through Salt Lake, I'm gonna have an appointment and have them fix that. But he also found a minor, I don't even wanna call it a leak, like a little seepage out of a, a, um, a pinion cover on my transmission. So. Um, that's a Freightliner fix. I'll probably get that done when I'm on home time. Um, it's not something to super, be super worried about. But, um, yeah, so, like, he, he, he noticed that my um, hoses in 7-pin only had one connection, and they were dipped down below the catwalk when they weren't hooked up. So he put another spring on there so they're up. He said that was a DOT issue. Like, I didn't know that was something they, they really looked at, but he said they've had some people get dinked for it. So he took care of me there. And then Jeremy is the guy that actually fixed the mirrors um, and did a cup and threw some grease on my fifth wheel when I asked him to. So it was just, it was just a great experience. And, and actually, while I was waiting for the mirrors to get fixed, I just went and had breakfast. You know, it was like perfect. And then um, I got out of the shop quickly um, without any brain damage. And uh, the other guy showed up, we swapped trailers and off we went. And uh, yeah, so I got, I got no complaints about that. So just, you know, we're here in Nevada. Um, you know, just a couple of points about Nevada. It's a really big state. Um, it's not as big as California, but it's a really big state. It's actually the fifth largest state. And by the way, the other day I was in the sixth largest, which is New Mexico. But um, Nevada is the silver state, as everybody knows. Um, and in Nevada, there are several big name universities. Um, all of them, except for one, and I'll name that one in a second, all of them, um, their, their, uh, what do I want to say? Their mascot, their, their name is the Gamblers. Go figure. Um, the only one that's not called the Gamblers is, um, is UNLV, the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. And, uh, they're called the Running Rebels. Now, if you followed me for even two seconds, you know I kind of know a little bit about the Civil War and I'm interested in the Civil War. And honestly, I cannot recall any order of battle that I've ever looked at that included any regiment from the state of Nevada. So I'm not sure where that run and rebels thing came from. I mean, the run and stuff I get, because you know, they, they won a national championship in basketball, true fact. Um, when Jerry Tarkanian was uh, the coach, and but I, I got nothing on the the whole rebels thing. I mean, it's it's alliteration, of course, but that's not a good enough reason to have that as your mascot. So anyway, um, yeah, the capital here is Carson City, Nevada, and you know we're going to be heading across 80 and going through Reno, which I think bills itself as the the biggest little town in America or the biggest little city in America. I, I'd have to ask my wife because I think her grandparents lived in, in the Reno area for a little while, but I think that's what they call it. But anyway, something to look for, a couple of things to look forward to this over the next few days. So there's a sign on the road as you come out of Salt Lake City and, and you'll see them in, in Utah and Nevada. And um, it's this it's this, um, it's like the, the California trail signs. And there's, there are some signs there that piqued my interest um, a, 
while back and they relate to the Donner Party. It doesn't say the Donner Party on it. It, it. it says something else and I'll explain about that probably tomorrow because we'll, be, um, we'll be crossing the Donner Pass. Um, it'll be dark out, but, but I'm going to talk about that because I, I, I think it's like super interesting and it's it's about Western migration, but it's also about getting bad advice. So, um, and we have all done that. So it's just, um, I think that's interesting. I think it's relatable for people that have to figure out how to get places. And then the other thing that I'm going to talk about this week in a separate uh, show, if you will, is um, what the first month looked like for us in terms of in terms of settlements to the truck. So tomorrow's the 10th. Today's actually the 31st day that I've had this truck. And the this week's pay closed out. Well, it's actually already closed out, but closes out today. So it'll be a it'll be a good, accurate snapshot of what what we were able to accomplish in the first month. And also that, you know, I took some time off and I had the ACE 2 class that I talked about. So it'll, it'll be interesting, but I think it'll be, um, I, you know, and I don't know what the numbers are yet either. So, but I'm, I'm, we'll share those and um, talk about that a little bit and what we're trying to do to get, you know, where we need to improve. And I'm still at just... Um, I'm still at 9.8 miles per gallon, even though I sort of dropped the hammer yesterday. Um, so I'm still at 9.8 gallons or 9.8 miles per gallon for the entirety of having this truck. So um, maybe we could talk about how that's going, um, how many times I get flipped off, etc. So anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, be safe out there. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Bye.